In this HVACR training video, we're going over the indicators for a liquid line restriction problem, low indoor airflow problem, and a low refrigerant charge on an air conditioning system. So the hoses have been connected, the air has been purged, and we're going to get ready to turn this system on, and I'm going to show you what it looks like on a manifold gauge set for a system that has a correct refrigerant charge and correct airflow and then after that we're going to create a airflow problem i'm going to restrict the airflow to this system at the indoor unit and then we're going to monitor this and see what happens so in real life you could have an airflow problem such as a clogged filter you could have a collapsed duct you could have a low blower speed then we're also going to compare that against a liquid line restriction problem and that's a problem in the liquid line where you have a blockage so maybe it's the txv is bad and it's closed down or maybe the bulb has leaked this refrigerant on the top of the TXV, that's the indoor metering device, and maybe you have a clogged strainer screen right before the metering device, or maybe you have a clogged filter dryer. The whole point of this video is to show you that you don't have to add any refrigerant during your troubleshooting of an air conditioning system. So you may have a problem that's not low refrigerant charge, and I want you to be able to quickly diagnose that problem. Before we measure the charge with our airflow problem, I want to show you what our pressure sat temp superheat and subcooling look like right now. So on the low pressure side, we have right about 120 PSI and the temperature on the vapor line is 52.1 degrees. So we also have our pressure converted to sat temp, which is 40 degrees. So you take 52 roughly minus 40 degrees roughly, and we are left with 11 degrees of total superheat. And that would be correct because we have a thermostatic expansion valve as the metering device. But now let's move on to our liquid side. So on the high pressure side, we have 319 PSI. We convert that to a saturated temperature of about 100.7 degrees. And then on the liquid line itself right here, we measure 89.8 degrees. And so what we do is we take 100 minus 89 roughly and we have 10.9 degrees of subcoin, so about 11 degrees of subcoin. Up on the rating plate, this unit says that it needs 9.7 degrees of subcoin. And so we check the charge with the subcoin method because the unit has a thermostatic expansion valve. And so it's going to hold a superheat right about, say, 8 to 14 degrees. And the subcoin should be plus or minus what, uh, about three degrees compared to what it says on the rating plate, and we are right on it, right on 10 degrees of subcoin. Okay, so we know our refrigerant charge is good. We have a 20 degree delta T inside, and next what we're gonna do is we're gonna restrict our indoor airflow, and then we're gonna come back out here and check the charge. You really wanna measure the airflow before you even bother checking the refrigerant charge. You wanna make sure that you have a right around, say 350 to 425, cubic feet per minute per ton of air conditioning capacity. Now let's move in and restrict our airflow. So you see our low side pressure, which is over here, is uh, much lower than before, and we have a sat temp that's below 32 degrees, which is the temperature in which water is going to freeze onto that coil. Now you see our low pressure side is bouncing around, and that is due to the thermostatic expansion valve trying to adjust the amount of refrigerant going into that indoor coil, because there's barely any heat load in there because there's no air crossing the coil. There's a little bit of airflow crossing the coil. We have right now, right above 32 degrees, we've got a superheat of about 16 degrees, which is a little higher than normal. It, but once again, you can't really go by the superheat here because it's going to bounce back and forth. What you want to pay attention to is your low side sat temp. It's below normal. You have a normal-ish superheat, like a normal superheat between say eight to say 16 degrees. And you look over here, this pressure and sat temp and subcooling is about the same as it was before. So this subcooling could be the same or it might be a little bit higher, but the telltale sign is that you have the correct amount of subcooling and you have the correct amount of superheat 
and your sat temp is a little low. So you would not be adding refrigerant into this if your saturated temperature is below 32 degrees. You're going to know that you have the accurate charge because you have a high subcooling. You have 10 degrees, you know, and that's, that's correct. The big long and short of this is just because it has a low vapor saturated temperature, that does not mean it's low on refrigerant. You got to look over here. You have 10 degrees of subcooling, adding more refrigerant. It's just going to increase the subcooling higher, and we already have a good amount of subcooling. Our superheat is pretty close to what it should have. It's not like the superheat's high, indicating a low refrigerant charge. It's just our saturated temperature is low, indicating that we have a low heat load inside the building. So that could be that either your indoor wet bulb temperature is low or you have restricted airflow. You have a low indoor airflow. So you gotta make sure to check your low indoor airflow before checking the refrigerant charge on an air conditioning system. Now let's move on to a liquid lime restriction problem and I'm gonna set the airflow back at normal, which for this system is about 1200 CFMs. And now we're going to compare our normal refrigerant charge readings to when we have a liquid lime restriction problem. So now that we created a liquid lime restriction, so basically we made it as if the bulb had lost the refrigerant charge. And so we did that by sticking that bulb in some ice. And so now we are at, on the low pressure side, which is here, we have 94 PSI. We have a sat temp that's very low at 28, uh, 28 degrees. And our suction line temperature is very high at 57 degrees. So what's happening is, the thermostatic expansion valve thinks that the line is very low in temperature, so it shut down the, the orifice basically inside the TXV. So that's leading to very high superheat. You're gonna notice our subcooling stayed about the same, right? It's right before it was about 10.5, it's at 11 degrees right now. Pressure, sat temp, and subcooling on the high side is relatively the same. And you notice that on our low side, we have a low vapor sat temp and a high superheat. So that's how you tell the difference between a low airflow problem where the superheat is still correct and you have a low sat temp and a liquid lime restriction problem where you would have a high superheat and a low vapor sat temp. Now, if we were low on refrigerant, it may look like this over here on this side, but on this side we would have maybe one or two degrees of subcooling. Our, our high side pressure would be lower and so we might not have any subcooling. So zero degrees of subcooling and a high superheat and low sat temp would indicate a low refrigerant charge. That is not the case here. So you shouldn't be adding refrigerant to this to see if you could raise that low side, low side pressure and low side sat temp. That's not what you would want to do. You would just want to be able to diagnose things quickly. And we have a bunch of parameters on our quick reference cards in order to be able to uh, check the charge and troubleshoot real quickly. And so those are available at our website at acservicetech.com and also on Amazon. And so it's very important to know how to read your manifold gauge set correctly, check your airflow before you even bother measuring the pressure, and just know what the difference is between a correct charge, undercharge, liquid line restriction, low indoor airflow. If you want to learn more about checking the refrigerant charge and troubleshooting, make sure to check out our Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning book. We also have a thousand question workbook. We also have quick reference cards that you can use out in the field that are very durable and these ones are made out of polystyrene so they'll hold up well in your service bag and these are all available over at Amazon and also at our website at aecservicetech.com so make sure to check those out as well as all the free resources we have such as the articles, the quick tips, the calculators, the quizzes and all the other free resources over at aecservicetech.com and so hope you enjoyed yourself we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel